Hey there buddies, Jose here at Wire Ninjas. Today's install day and we're going to show you guys how to wall mount and install a nice beautiful uh, 85 inch Samsung TV panel but also um, I'm going to get more in depth, show you guys how to build circuits, high and low voltage stuff. I'm going to show you how to cut gangs, probe the walls and how we actually do a full TV install from start to finish. So let's go check it out. All right, gang, so now we're inside the home and let's take a look at the workspace here first. So, here we have our working space. This is gonna be our front media wall where the TV panel is actually gonna get installed. And we'll take a look at the back. So it's more of a long, narrow kind of corridor shape of a room. As you can see, we already have the panel out. This is a massive 85 inch panel. Model number QN85QN90AAF. It's Q90, Steve. It's a really nice panel, man. <laughs> so the panel is ready for the mount to go on, or for the mount ting brackets to go on the back of the panel. We've already started to take our measurements now. The first measurement that you should be taking is height and center. And I always, always, always bring the client or the homeowner in on this part of the process. It's very important that you take into account a couple things. Number one, the homeowner's perspective and their input on the aesthetics, on the spatial, uh, how do you say, parameters. Um, some people, you know, all, all this stuff is subjective. And uh, every homeowner is different. Some people want it real high, some people want it low, some people want the perfect viewing angle. I always guide them, make recommendations, and say, hey, let's get the perfect viewing angle. But you respect them and, and what they want, most importantly. So what we'd like to do is we measure the panel. The panel's height gets measured top to bottom. And then we take this working height, throw a tape measure on the wall, have one of our staff and the homeowner sit in the seating, and depending on the distance, you know, in correlation between the distance, the height of the seating itself, and the size of the panel, we basically spec out where the center falls naturally. With us sitting in the seating in a natural position, where are our eyes looking dead center to the panel? And wherever that is, that's usually where the panel gets installed. Now again, sometimes the homeowners will override this. There's no problem with that. Make sure it's very important to take into account any and all perspectives or measurements or input before you throw the bracket on the wall. We like to install TVs one time, the first time, and just get it done. You know, not have to do a remount or reinstall. Make sure everyone's happy as well. So the initial measurement is height and center. We have to determine where we're looking dead center relative to the seating position. Once we determine that, we take into account all other parameters or input, and we make a decision where the height and center is going to go on the TV. Now that we know the working height and center, we can proceed with the install, which the next step would be getting the brackets on the back of the TV. Once these brackets are on, we'll pull the, we'll pull the wall plate, and we can acquire our offsets between the wall plate and the TV itself. With these offsets, we can take those match the measure match up the offsets or how do you say cross-reference the offset with the working height that we want the height and center and we can get the wall plate on the wall after that we can start to build our circuits let's not jump ahead too far i just want to give you guys the process moving forward so as soon as these guys are ready we'll get the bracket on this thing we'll measure our offsets we'll do all the math and we'll show you guys where this thing's supposed to land So again, once you establish height and center, you can get these brackets on the back of the TV. That takes finding the right screws for your TV. And any mount, brand new mount, in the box, you're gonna see a long strip of screws. These are for the TV so that the, these brackets can go on the back of the TV. Find the screws that fit your TV and the brackets, and then get the bracket secured to the back of the TV. Now with the bracket secured to the back of the TV, you guys pull the slack on these? Yeah. Very cool. So with the bracket secured to the back of the TV, we can now get a working offset and match that up with the height that we want. So let's measure the offset, boys. You can do offset top to bottom or bottom to top. It doesn't really matter. Once you get real good at measuring, you 21 can- 21 uh, and a half. I would say 20, 21 and three quarters. So we have an offset of 21 and three quarters. 
I have my marker here. So 21 and 3 quarters. Can I have something real to write on? It's not like shiny. No, this kind of works. 21 and 3 quarter inch is the offset. Okay. Thank you. All right, what's the working height that we want? I think we said four inches off the bottom, or off the bottom banister. It was three inches off the top and offset. Uh, oh, three inches off, so then you gotta measure top offset. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we're working off the top. So it's three inches off the top, rolled in. So we're gonna do a top offset. Three inches. Is it there? So we have three inches off the top from top down. We want the TV gap three inches off the ceiling in this room. And what do we have for offset? Fourteen. Fourteen inches. So the four so the offset from the top of the mount to the top of the TV is 14 inches. We want a three inch gap in addition to that. So we're gonna add three and 14 together, get 17 inches. Now we know we want to make a mark 17 inches down from the crown molding. We're gonna mark 17 inches down. That's where the bracket's actually gonna get placed. 17 inches down from the top will give us 14 inches of TV plus three inches of gap off that ceiling, that crown. So we marked the top, right? Now we need a working center, which I think we established, but let's go over that. So for this room, or many rooms, the center can be a couple of things. Steve, let's go off for this room. All right, we're gonna go, now we're gonna go off here because I wanna center between this wall and this box. That's what we established. So go to the top, no, go to right here, yep. And then we're going to add an inch, Steve. What do you have? 95. So we're going to add an inch for this extra wall piece. 95, so 96. 96. So 96 divided by 2 is the center off this line. You can go... So 96 divided by 2, what do you have? 45, 48? 48. All right, so we're going to go 48 off of that, like, split right there. No. To the top. Oh, yeah. No, it's easier for you, Steve. Flip the tape. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna go 48 off that line. That'll be your working center. So, center can be a lot of things, especially for this room or many other rooms. So we could have centered between this wall and that wall. We could have centered between the top there and the top there. But what I did, what I chose to do, what we discussed with the homeowner was, let's center between this wall and the top box and that includes this this extra inch of offset too so when we're looking down when we're back here in the seating area we have a nice working space for our eyes if we center it with this wall the TV is gonna sit way too far to the left it's gonna sit all the way over here right and it's gonna look very aesthetically odd so you want to take into account the, the layout, the structure, the aesthetics of this thing, and the viewing angle. Put that all together when you establish your working height and center. So we know where the mount bracket's going to go now with our working height and center. So we have a height and we have a center. Steve, right here? Center. That's the center you drew? Center. All right, so now we can proceed and get the mount bracket on the wall. The first step in that is putting the bracket on the wall in the desired height and center and marking out the locations of the holes for the, the hardware to go through. There's probably about, I don't know, six holes on the top and six on the bottom. So I recommend a pencil level stud finder for this next step. So Steve's gonna line up the bracket at the height we want and at the center we want. Then he's gonna put a level on top of the bracket to make sure it's level before we draw our holes. This thing, it's so big, Steve, that it has to go right on the bracket. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to offset to catch at least one set of studs here. 
If we can catch a stud, that'd be great, but is it even a real stud down here? We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you think we should do? I think we should pilot the studs, see if they're real studs, and if not, we know we have to use toggles and we don't need an offset. So, let's go ahead and pilot one of these studs and see if it even is a stud. I don't think so, dude. I think it's metal. Yeah. Which doesn't really help us. Yeah. <laughs> not every wall is the same, and uh, it wouldn't hurt to know what we're dealing with before we get this mounting bracket on the wall. So, we're going to get the vac set up in a small pilot bit to... Uh, Check and see if we have real wood studs in here. A lot of basement gets finished with uh, metal studs. They don't really help too much. You have to do a special process to uh, secure anything to them. I don't feel anything though. They could be that they're flat, and not not forming a full gap to the to the stone wall behind us, or it could just be they're metal and clumsy, and you don't hear them like knocking. We're just gonna match the studs. So, here you go, all the way this way. There you go. And set it where you want to. A little bit more over. So, being that this is such a large panel, we're gonna make sure to hit studs. We can use toggles, and toggles hold a fair amount of weight, 225 pounds per toggle. However, if you can hit studs, it's always best to do so, especially with a heavier panel. Some of these newer, smaller panels weigh almost nothing. Um, however, being that we have an 85 inch Q90, this thing's a solid panel, you know? It's it's not like some of the other panels where they're filled with air in the back. This thing is solid, real heavy panel. So we're gonna offset the mount about an inch and a half to the right so that we can accommodate fitting the studs. And then draw another one all the way left, Steve. We'll throw some toggles if we have to. Especially with the offset, yeah, we'll do some toggles there. You hit two studs and one toggles, right? Yep. So, he threw the bracket up on the wall, he leveled it, and, and then he drew our holes. He did one set over this stud, so we can hit this stud. One set over this stud, so we can hit this stud. And then because we're gonna have a large hang here, like six to eight inches of the mount, I'm gonna hit two toggles here so it's secured at this end too. These two studs will do a great job of securing, but I like to go the extra mile and throw some toggles if there's this much gap, you know? Especially if we're gonna offset the TV back this way, it's gonna be hanging on this side more. So we're doing six total pieces of hardware. We're gonna do four lags, two and two on each stud, and then we're gonna do two toggle bolts. So for this, we're gonna to need to, the next step would be to pilot these holes out with a pilot bit, a smaller drill bit so the lags go in there. And then also pilot a half inch for these toggle screws. So we're gonna get our hardware ready here. <clears throat> we have, we can do a half inch, half inch there for the toggles. And then we'll get you one for the lags. These are togglers. So basically you drill a half inch hole, you shoot the toggle into the wall, it goes in flat like this, and then you pull it back, it extends, it grabs the drywall, and you're gonna push this, you're gonna pull and push simultaneously, you're gonna pull this end, push this in, and these will these will bridge to meet the wall and grab that wall real good and hold a lot of weight. These things are awesome. You guys let's get a good look at how that works right now. I'm gonna find you a piloting bit for this as well. Let's find a nice show bit. Yeah, we'll pilot with this bit. We'll core it out so the, the lags will go in there nice and straight. So you can see he's marking the center of the stud, so you make sure to hit the very dead center of the stud. This is for a couple reasons. Number one, it's the strongest way to do it, so you know that that lag screw will go in there and be nice and strong. It'll have plenty of wood to grab. The other reason is because a lot of times during in these stud bays, you'll have wiring run down the side of the stud. You don't want to shoot, drill through, or screw through, or cut into any of the wiring that happens in these stud bays. 
That's another good reason why you want to hit dead center on the stud when you're mounting anything. So he's marked where he's going to hit his lags. Now you can pilot it out with the piloting bit. We're going to run the vac while we do that. Anytime we're drilling or cutting, we run the vac to keep everything nice and clean. The vac will suck up all the dust. Also, Jeff, I have uh, new vac bags because I think this bag's a little bit full. So if you notice, whenever he puts the drill bit through the drywall initially, he then taps the drill. And what that does is that lets him know that when he when that drill bit's hitting the wood behind the drill, he can feel the wood stud back there. It's a good protocol to have to basically test every time you put the bit right through the drywall, it'll shoot right through, and then whatever's back there, you're going to get a feel on. If it's wood, it feels a certain way, and then, then the bit will cut into it a certain way. If it's not wood, it'll feel different. If it's metal, you'll feel a bend or a flex. With a pipe, you'll definitely feel a bend or a flex unless it's one of those uh, lead pipes, those metal pipes. But it will, like the bit will try to travel down the side of the pipe as opposed to kind of grabbing into it like wood. You always want to make sure you're drilling through a stud and not a pipe or anything else. So check it out, now we have two half inch holes, one for each toggle, and then we have four piloted holes for lag screws. This is gonna be a very solid, very secure mount. Let's get into the togglers now. So, like I said, this thing flips down, but it goes in straight. So you're gonna put this thing, slip it in straight through the half inch hole. Now, now it's stuck in there because the little flip on the toggle, it flips, so now it's pulling against the wall. So you're gonna you're gonna hold here while you push in the tabs. I can probably do it one hand, but if someone would help me, it'd be great. Yeah. So hold there, push in the tabs, and then it snaps right off. Once this is flush to the wall, you know it's there's no gap or flush, you can snap it right off. You twist up and then you twist down and it snaps right off. So now you have a beautiful piece of hardware in the wall that's ready to hold up to 225 pounds. So these two coupled with the legs will be a very solid secure mounting situation. We'll get our other strap toggle in here and then we'll get the legs in on this mount. Here, get the other toggler in if you're ready and then we can... Uh, and then Steve, we can show uh, if you want to do the toggles first to make sure that everything's level. We can level off the toggles, which is easier. So if you do have toggle screws in the wall, sometimes it's easier to, to secure that hardware and make sure the mount's level before you throw in your lags. Because lags are so strong that it'll pull the, the mount off level. Like it'll grab and twist so hard, it, it'll pull the mount out of position. So sometimes it's easier to get the toggles in first, make sure she's level so this can't happen. However, if you have nice pilot holes, it shouldn't pull too much. They should be nice and straight, and the lag should just go straight in. 
So now you take the toggle hardware, you can slip it in there and screw it all the way down. And I'll get you guys, you have a level on you? Or you need one? Need one. Yeah. You need a screwdriver too, probably. Leave it. Jeff, hold that level up there. Jeff, hold her level for him so you can secure that. So your side's got to go up just a tear. That's perfect. That'll be perfect right there. So you can see we're holding her level using the buddy system, the patented Wire Ninja's buddy system. So she's nice and level. The toggles will hold the bracket in place while you get the rest of the screws in. It's real nice. Toggles are any installer's uh, best friend sometimes. There's a lot of mounting situations which get very tough, not ideal. Um, and toggles will save you in, this, in a lot of situations. And sometimes there's not even a big gap between the wall. Um, hopefully we'll do a video on that. Some special applications of the toggle, very specific stuff. Little techniques I've developed for dealing with things, not ideal situations. I'd see this wall is pretty straight color though. So another thing here, another protocol that I've, like, I've instilled is uh, finishing these with the ratchet. So he's going to drill these in with the drill and then we'll finish them up with the ratchet after that. Just hit them, bro. Yeah, yeah we don't need to, to back it out. We're going to back up in a little bit anyway. So now that all the hardware is in, these are nice and torqued. These are going to finish with the ratchet. We keep the level on there to make sure we're level the whole time. Oops, I'm gonna, while he's torquing those down, where's the stud finder right here? I'm going to go over something real important for you guys. Stud finder. Uh, very important to have one, number one. It's very hard to do this without one unless you're very experienced at, at dealing with walls and wall materials. and drilling and driving stuff through walls. It is possible to do without one. Uh, if you're very skilled, but it's not gonna be the cleanest job ever. Um, stud finders. This is the best one I found in, the, in my area. It's made by Franklin Sensors. You can only get it at Lowe's. Actually, Home Depot came out with a Ryobi that looks exactly like this. I'm sure it's made by the same company. I'm sure they reached out to Franklin and said, hey, can we license your technology? But you really want one that looks like this. Those typical Zircons, uh, I've never fared well with. They, they're inaccurate for me. I don't like the way the screen reads out. Um, this one's simple, easy to use. Uh, I will say they do last, but they don't last as long as they should. The primary flaw is the button breaks in the middle. But as you can see, I've repaired this one myself and kept it around. I've had these for years now. And you see how it shows the stud? Really nice, clean, simple, easy to use, and it works very well. There's like 11 sensors on board here. And uh, before this thing existed, I was very unhappy with all the stud finders on the market. See that operation? It's real nice. It shows you the inner outer edge and the dead center of the stud. Very important to have a good stud finder. I recommend this one most definitely. This is the only one I like to have on me. So now he finished torquing these off. We torque these by hand to avoid breaking the wall or over tightening the screws or straining the wall, stressing the drywall. A lot of things can happen with over torquing any of these. Very important that you follow the same. So now the mounts on the wall, the TV is ready to go up. However, though, it's not because we have to build some circuits for this thing, but we couldn't do so until the mount was on the wall. Until we know where the mount's actually going, we can't decide where we want to pull these wires out of. So now with the mount on the wall, we're going to do a little bit of uh, looking into where we want the wires. We're going to take into account where the wires come out on the actual panel. So is it is it better to have the wires come out in a certain area behind the panel? Or should we just do them through the middle and then redistribute to each side? Uh, we're going to take a look at the wall and the wall material and decide how we're going to go do that. And we'll show you guys how we get it done. Okay. Let's kill it. 
All right, guys. So we cut our gang here. We cut a double gang because we need high and low voltage circuits. And we also cut it there for another couple reasons. Number one, we have a cabinet that we're working with. The cabinet is 63 inches long. We took into account the cabinet 63 inches between the center of the, of the TV panel and the wall. So measuring 63 inches, the cabinet goes to about here. So we want it to stay inside the width of the cabinet because we're not only building the circuit back to the TV, but also to the AV cabinet, to the devices. So wherever we cut this gang, we want to be able to cut a gang down there in the same location, still be behind the cabinet and build our circuits in the wall. What Steve's doing right now is probing to see if the wall's gapped so we don't have to cut a strip in the drywall creating additional damage for the homeowner to repair later. We do spackle our cuts that we make, but still he would have to paint the wall. So if we can avoid that, we're gonna do that. It looks like we can get all the way to the outlet, right? Maybe. So yeah, the snake tells me that we can get all the way down to the outlet and draw the power that we need. The next cut's gonna be uh, directly underneath behind the cabinet in the same exact location. We're going to match the height of the existing outlet for aesthetic purposes. Let's make sure we're under the cabinet though. It should be under. So we want to be within but also underneath. So the next step is drawing. Let's match. Yeah, let's pull the cover. Let's find the height. And we're going to get a height and center. So the height would be the existing receptacle and the center would fall in line exactly with this gang. So now we can build a circuit between the three receptacles. So Jeff's going to pull that plate, we're going to get a height of the existing outlet, and we're going to match that height for our new gang, and then we're going to match the center with this. So he's going to get a working height. 15 and a half. 15 and a is our working height. Let's draw a line there. And now for the other side, Steve, measure from here to that wall, because you have a nice solid point of reference there. So, 67 and a half. So now drop the tape and hit the same line. Give Jeff the pencil so he can draw it. Wait, all the way down. Yep. Yep, so draw it right there. Draw a mark right there. Oh, uh, you want to go above the above the gang line because we're gonna do it right here. Okay. So just move the tape up and do it up there. We can erase it. Don't worry. So draw it there. Now he has two points to match his gang template. And draw it and cut it. So throw your template up. And let's draw it out. Match those two points, the top and the bottom. Nope. Go right to the right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep, make sure it's level and then draw it. So as you can see, he's going to fall under this gang. Now for this wall material, that's wood, so we're going to have to get out the oscillating saw and cut that out with the oscillating. It's the safest way to make this cut. So we're trying to show you guys not only how we do things, but the theory behind why we do it, tips and trips along the way. Alright, so now we have a little template, and we're going to cut this out with the oscillating saw. So check it out, guys. We had to run to the store because we were low on supplies. But as you can see, we cut our gang up top. That gave us a couple things. It gave us the understanding that we can get through the walls without cutting additional tracks in the wall, stuff like that. Um, we have our probe or our snake or fiberglass fish rod in the wall and we know we can get from point A to point B. We also test it and we know we can get back to the power source. So we're going to start wiring this thing up. We're going to start with the top receptacle and work our way down. Uh, a couple things to note, we have all our stuff laid out here. Romex wiring is laid out ready to go. Romex in particular, you want to uncoil it and lay it flat. It comes out much nicer if you actually pull it flat. This cable is very rigid and it's got a lot of memory to it. So whichever way you bend it, it wants to stay. For example, I'll bend this and you see how it keeps that bend. You want to work the bends out of the roll. So you pull it out of the roll and work out the bends. Get it nice and straight if you can. Uh, we have our receptacles. We're using high low voltage gangs here. 
We're going to do power on one side, low voltage, uh, HDMI's and category cabling on the other side. We have our outlets, decor style outlets. We have a drill. We have some lineman pliers and we have a couple hand tools here ready for us. The last thing is in my pocket. I like to keep these in my back pocket. My trusty cutters. These are excellent cutters for any and all applications. I'm actually in love with these due to the flush cut design. And they're really sharp out of the box. So let's get into it. I'm going to pass off the camera while I start wiring this up. Like I said, we're going to wire from the top down. We're going to hit the top receptacle, work our way down, and then hit power last. Always turn off the breaker before you work on any power circuits. Uh, Jeff, I mean my cameraman. Did you hit the breaker? No, I'm going to work down. So I always tie in the, the new outlets and then you tie into power last. So we'll get into that last step. But, um, oh, one other thing to note, Jeff, take a look. Let's take a look at these circuits. So we have all our low voltage circuits laid out. And what Steve's doing right now is pre-wiring or uh, pre-labeling these. So we have HDMI 2 on one side. He's going to put this label at both ends of the wire. One thing to note, when you're using really high grade cables, they are directional. So this side has to go to the source. The other side has to go to the display. They should be all labeled in this fashion. See that? So we're going to pre-wire four HDMIs and two category cables. We're not going to use the category cabling. However, Jeff, but as you can see, we have, get on the inside. Yeah, we have four HDMIs on the TV, so we want to hit every port that way. This is a nice finished install. He'll have extra HDMIs to play with after the install is complete, you know. We now never have to take the panel down again. And we're also using really high-grade cables so that it's a robust and long-lasting installation in that sense. I'll show you guys. I don't really need the snake to do this, but I'll show you guys generally how we pull wires. And that's using a fiberglass fish rod. For the most part, it depends on the it depends on the particular wire run. So you're gonna tape up your wire and then tape it to the snake with some electrical tape, and then you can feed yourself in. And then we're gonna pull this wire through. This is how most circuits are built in walls. Uh, there's different snakes on the market, like metal ones and stuff like that. Use whatever you see fit. Every snake or every tool has its own purpose, and some are better at other than others at certain things. The metal ones are great for crossing corners or really flat, like gaps in the wall where you don't have much space. So that's cool. And we can put this rod back in the wall. I'll put it back in the wall so we're ready for our next pull. Because we're going to pull the low voltage as soon as Steve's ready for us. So you insert your snake in the wall. You find it on the other side. Pull it through. She's ready to go for the next uh, circuit path. So I'm going to pre wire some Romex from this location to this location. You honestly only need about six inches coming out of the wall. That's a nice amount. That way your receptacle can pull out. You can work on this thing, do what you need to do. I always use heavy lineman pliers to cut these fatter uh, copper cables. You don't want to ruin your little mini flush cutters or anything like that. So we'll start with the Romex. A little prep board box. It's got these little legs. These little legs keep the cable secured to the receptacle. It's something you have to do for electrical high voltage. And these little boxes do the, the little trick of uh, taking care of that for us. We're actually going to go in the bottom. So I'm going to flip the orientation here. Open up this. That way I can shoot my wire in and through. So you can see it's tough to pull the receptacle out. That's what those little legs do. They stop the wire so the wire can't leave the receptacle entirely. So I think we're good on length here and here. Yeah, I like the length here and here. So we can start to wire in this side. It's much easier to work with this Romex cable when it's not live and not connected to anything on the other side. If I was connecting to a power source, I'd make sure to have the breaker off. So we have our little jacket. We'll get the jacket off. Okay. Those heads are not going to be suitable. They're really sharp. That's the start of the roll from the factory. So I'm going to cut those heads nice and sh uh, flat, basically. A little mess. We'll clean it up. No worries. These are nice and flat, prepped and ready to go. Now, red we're not going to use here in this particular circuit. So we're going to tuck that back. We're going to use the white, the black, and the copper, the exposed copper, which would be our ground. Hot, neutral, ground. 
is your main circuits. Now we're gonna get prep the outlet. You got gold on one side, then you got the silver or white on the other side. I'm gonna close these off because we don't need them. We're gonna use the push pins in the back of the outlet and then the ground will leave for ourselves ready to go. So a couple things to indicate. So hot side is gonna be the smaller little rectangle. It's also gonna be the gold side. The neutral side is gonna be the larger rectangle on the left and then the white side. So let's go ahead and punch these in. You wanna you want to strip a certain amount off, off of the wire to go in. You can get a gauge by putting the wire next to the thing. But you wanna basically get that in there and then check and make sure she's snug and she's grabbing. Some of these uh, outlets will come defective and they won't grab. So you gotta make sure to check to see if it's grabbing before you complete the install and put the receptacle back in the housing. For the last one, I'm gonna grab it a little ways down, about a half inch down, a flick of the wrist, twist, and then close it off. And now I'm ready for my ground. I have a nice little loop there. I'm gonna give it a slight 90 degree bend so I can get the leg in, close it off. Now remember, I'm gonna turn clockwise. So you want to make the cut and send it in clockwise so that it doesn't loosen it up. It doesn't loosen up the connection. It actually grips and tightens the connection as it goes down. So we have our three wires terminated. Now we can put our electrical tape on and got to avoid the screws here on the top and bottom. A lot of guys, they stop using tape after a while. I guess they get comfortable, but it's not about you. It's about the next guy putting this in or servicing this or whatever. Safety is important. So I like to give it about two runs of tape, you know, protect those terminals or anyone from those terminals. Very cool, she's taped up, she's ready to go in. Now, this wiring inside, it has to bend and flex like an accordion. You wanna get a nice bend like an accordion in there so that the wires are tucked neatly, it's not pushing back too much. Then you can line up your top and bottom screws and get them in. Let's get that in first and then we'll uh, work the other side. Steve should be ready for low voltage right now. So, we'll get that done. Tight, but not over tight. Okay, that side's ready. Now we're ready for a low voltage circuit. So let's pull them with the display end. Which is the display end? This is the display end. So this is the display end. We're gonna pull all these up there. What we're gonna do is give it a light taping. We have plenty of wall width, so we don't need to go crazy with the tape. I just wanna get them all together. And then, We'll give it a run down here, and then we'll jump up to the cat up there. Because I don't want to mess up the labels or the head. So these are all the display in, right, Steve? All right. Get it inside the wall. Pull our cables through. Not every wall is as forgiving as this. Not every wall has as much space as this wall. Um, this can get very involved, very frustrating. Very spatially challenging, very quickly. So, get our tape off. Very cool, snake is out. So, we'll get our tape off. We'll pull it through the receptacle. Have this receptacle here waiting for us. And that's high and low voltage right there. But uh, seems like it's too small. Yep, the cut is too small. She's just snug and fit. <laughs> yeah, you guys gotta cut right on the line or right outside the line. All right, that works though. Cuts nice and snug. So now the next step, I guess, would be pulling what we need for the TV panel itself. This can be guesstimated or this can be measured. Um, let's take a look over here, Jeff. So, the gang's about here. As the mount's here, the gang's coming out right about here. So we need a foot down, and I would say a foot or two to loop around and, and plug into the HDMI port. So we're gonna pull three feet out of the wall, maybe a little bit less. That's too much. Three feet right here where my finger is. I'll pull it back. 
That should be just about enough. Three feet is generally the rule I go uh, to pull up for a larger panel because the wires have to come down and then maybe loop around, hit inside. We could be pulling a little bit back, maybe a foot back just in case. But you picture the wires are gonna plug in here and we'll pull some back as we need to. We have to finish this with a finish and brush plate. We have this, Steve. That'll be a finisher. So take your brush and then So, brush plate's nice in this instance because the TV panel is going to be pretty flush to the wall. Also, we can pull the slack back and forth using a brush plate. That's a nice little... And run all the heads through, Kyle. Yeah, and run all the heads through. So we're going to run all our heads through. See how we have a decor square here and here now with this brush plate in? So we're going to get this brush plate in there. the drill because the screws are real long. Okay. Okay, she's about ready. And then the finished plate can go on. Very cool. So let's get those screws in. Fitment's a little weird, but she'll look good. It's because the box is kind of snug in there, but she'll be fine. So we're gonna finish that up top. Um, part of the reason why we pre-labeled these is because it's gonna be much easier. Now we know what's going where in the panel, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. HDMI 3 ARC, you can see is a different cable too. This is specifically for the Sonos bar. We have our two cats just as a backup, backup for video distribution, or um, we could do IR control with that. But we have these labeled. They're gonna go into the, the correlating ports on the TV. Then we know on the other side with the labels, we know exactly what's going where. It makes the install a lot easier. You know, a lot less frustration there when you know exactly what cable. You don't have to check the source every time, you know what I'm saying, flip around the TV, stuff like that. Whew. So, once we get this panel up, once he's done with that plate, once he's done with the plating, we can get the panel up. And we can pre-wire in all the HDMIs. And then we'll work on the circuits below. It's getting cool to check it out, alright. So, the last part of this, we got our circuits here. The last part was grabbing power here, sending it over, and completing this, uh, this point of entry. So, that includes the blue box, the outlet got wired in, uh, the low voltage got pulled through, we put our brush plate on, our finish plate, and the last thing would be to test our circuits. And as you can see, we have the correct wiring as per the diagram. So, this circuit's live, the one upstairs is live, all the HDMIs are plugged in. However, unfortunately, we have an issue with the TV. So we saw there was a crack in the TV. This TV took some major damage. I don't know what happened during shipping, but this Choose is why. How would you like to get started? Choose one. This is why I no longer sell panels here, Wire Ninjas, for exactly this reason. Um, this is due to shipping. There's nothing anyone could do about this. I... Yeah, sorry. Uh, we're just covering this in our video assessment, so. These things happen during shipping. This is particularly why I don't sell panels anymore. Why I just send people to go get them. It's nobody's fault. It's not IEI's fault. Um, yeah, we got to get a new panel. That's why I want you to come down, give them a call, and uh, let's get that going. We'll get you a new panel. Otherwise, we're going to finish the install. The circuits are built. Beautiful. No additional wall damage for you. You're Really? Yeah, we did our, Yeah, we did high and low down there, and we have high and low voltage circuits up there. We have four HDMIs running. We have category cabling. And we have power in both locations behind the panel. It's beautiful. Otherwise, the install will be done as far as the TV is concerned. So, moving on, we'll get the cabinet back into place and we'll proceed with the rest of the install, Sonos wise. Alright, gang, so <laughs> that completes our TV install here. <laughs> as you can see, the panel is defective. We ordered a new panel. We'll have it hand delivered today and we'll throw the new panel up. But we showed you guys how to mount the TV. We showed you how to build the circuits in the wall. We showed you the probing and snaking techniques, how to pull the wires through. We showed you our labeling schematic for the HDMIs. 
and it's the same high and low voltage receptacle top and bottom we showed you how to place the receptacle when to place the receptacle that's after the TV bracket goes on the wall and as you can see we've pre-run our low voltage circuits out of the wall we put our nice velcros on them so this TV installs done she's ready for her source devices we'll get the AV cabinet back in and uh, plug in all our sources however we're gonna have to throw a new panel on the wall otherwise the install is complete unfortunately we just had a defective panel this stuff does happen in the field uh, it's not often but it does happen and it's not a bad thing to note you know realistic so that's a wrap on this one we'll see you on the next video buddies